So you're very welcome here to Dovlinia this morning. And my name is Sean, I'm going to be your tour guide this morning and I'm going to take you on a tour of the Viking area of Dublin. Okay, so here we are on a typical Viking ship, a long ship. This is what they call them, long boats and long ships. They could travel up a river as well as cross an ocean. They could also land on a sandy beach. And this was perfect for what the Vikings wanted them for, to raid. The long ships sailed all the way from Norway down to Ireland. And it would have taken about seven days for them to sail this far across the ocean. A very hazardous journey. In a longboat you would have up to 60 warriors, 60 sailors, because you had to be a sailor and a warrior at the same time. And that was another thing that made the Viking ships very unique. So when the wind was low, they would start to row. When the wind was high, they would use their sail. And by doing this, they could achieve up to 190 kilometers in one day. Now, the Vikings that came to Dublin and to Ireland were generally from Norway. They went to Scotland also, and they also went to the Faroe Islands, on to Iceland, to Greenland, and as far across as the United States. So here we are in the first Viking settlement in Dublin in 841. They settled in Dublin over winter and nobody knows why. It's possible that it could have been an early winter and they didn't get a chance to actually sail back to Norway. And they would have settled down where Dublin Castle is today. They would have called it Dufflin and it became Dovlin, the Black Pool. And it's where we get our name today for the city, Dublin. They would have built a palestrade similar to this, made of wood, around their settlement. And that was because they feared the Irish would actually come and try and wipe them out. But there was no invasion of the Viking settlement in Dufflin, and so they stayed here over the winter. of, in one sense, two type of warriors. There were the ordinary warrior. He wore a tunic, a padded tunic, when he went into battle. He would have wore a leather type helmet. Many believe that a Viking would have had horns on his helmet. Unfortunately, they didn't. Because if a Viking had have had horns on his helmet, it would have been too easy for his enemy to grab the horn of the helmet, pull him back, slit his throat. And so it is only a myth that they wore horns on their helmets. The weapon of their choice would have been either an axe, a heavy axe with a long wooden handle. This meant that they could swing and they could stay out of the reach of their enemy. Some Vikings also preferred to have a sword. And their sword had a groove cut down the centre of the sword this was called the bloodline because it was said by having this groove in the sword it helped blood to flow when it entered their enemy. There was also another type of warrior and these were called berserkers. These wore um, bare skins as their tunic and they would actually work themselves up into a frenzy before a battle. So much so that they ran blindly into battle. We must remember that Vikings weren't afraid to die. They believed if they died in battle, they would go to Valhalla. They would be taken by the Valkyrie. These were warrior women from Valhalla. And they would be taken into the halls of Valhalla where they would fight and feast until the last battle. at a typical Viking burial. This is Gunnar. We have given Gunnar this name. 
is very special to us because Gunnar was found here in Dublin on South Great Georgia Street and he is a typical Viking burial. His grave was in the shape of a ship which is typical for Vikings because it means that they will sail with the Valkyrie to Valhalla. He was buried with his shield. He would be the typical Viking burial of a warrior. However, if you were a leader or a king or someone of great importance, you would be buried on the replica of a Viking longboat. On that longboat, there would have been your, some of your cattle, some of your, your belongings, very important, because you would need these things when you went to Valhalla. And it's known from the sagas that there was actual slaves and servants also buried on the longships with their leaders. Slavery was a big thing in Ireland for many, many centuries. After all, one of our most famous slaves, St. Patrick, had been taken from either the coast of Wales, Normandy or Scotland long before the Vikings ever came here to Dublin. Now, the Vikings taught that their time would end in the great battle of Ragnarok. At this time, the Valkyrie would bring all the warriors back to earth, all those who had died in battle, and there would be one last great battle. The sea would cover the earth, and a big wolf would actually swallow the sun. And at the end of this battle, there would be only two people left, one man and one woman. And it would be left to these people, these two people, to go and repopulate the earth and to start the Viking time all over again. However, in the Irish context, the Viking age ended when the Normans came into Dublin in 1170 with Strongbow at her head. He banished the Vikings from Dublin across the Liffey to the north side, to Oxmanstown. And that's where most of the Vikings stayed and that's where they, they lived and that's where they traded from. And this area today is known as Smithfield. It still has a great tradition in trading for the horse fair, etc, etc. And it's believed that this tradition came from that time. Here in Dublin and in Ireland, the Vikings started to marry into Irish families and vice versa. And so the two populations started to integrate. They started to trust each other more. They started to trade with each other more. And so the time for raiding was beginning to come to an end. The Vikings were raiders. We'll never be able to say that they weren't. They did, they raided, they murdered, they pillaged. However, over a short period of time in the Irish context, they also settled down. And this is where the Viking Age in Ireland went. It went from being raiders to traders and to being totally integrated with the Irish population. These are the ways and these are the things that actually helped to develop Dublin City the city that we have here today, three different populations, not only living beside each other, but becoming integrated with each other. Becoming, as some people say, almost as Irish as the Irish themselves. So, I hope you have enjoyed your tour here of Dovlinia today and you're always welcome to come back and visit us at any time. Thank you very much.